All right, I want to welcome those that are joining us now by TV and by radio and by live streaming. If you're listening by radio, you can go to www.theshepherdshouse.net and get the entire program. Let me make an announcement. I'll be preaching at the uh, Sampson Street Church of God August 26, 7 p.m. I think that's 428 Sampson Street, Glasgow, Kentucky. Come out and be with us. They're going to have a baby dedication service that night, and then they'll have regular service, and they've invited me to come and preach. So come on out and be with us. We'd love to have you uh, that night if you're uh, in the driving distance of Glasgow. All right, I'm going to be reading some things in the Word of God. Got quite a bit of Scripture today. Let me say this before uh, that I, I read the Word. Uh, the Lord called me to be a pastor uh, in 1984. He called me to be a preacher in 1982. I preached uh, about two and a half years before I took the pastor's position uh, of a church that I was called to be a pastor to, a, a church over in Cave City. Uh, many, 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 many years ago. And uh, the Lord's put a calling upon the pastor is different than an evangelist. And I do a lot of pastoral preaching, but I do a lot of evangelistic preaching on television and radio and on Sunday mornings, uh, going out to the lost and going out to those who have no hope. Today, I'm going to be the watchman. Uh, uh, preaching to the Christians mostly today and instructing us. We've got several young people in our church, and I thank God, not just for the teenagers, but for the little ones that are coming up, as well as you converts that we've got in the church. And I thank God our church is growing. We've got two to baptize uh, at the end of the service today. We're seeing new people coming into the church. We're seeing new people born into the kingdom of God. And the young people that are getting uh, just now getting saved, uh, they don't know how a Christian is supposed to live. They don't, they've not had any guidance. They just now, uh, like a little chicken that came out of the egg, uh, they just now learning to wobble and to walk and learning to scratch and to eat and to pick up uh, the, uh, the few crumbs that they can get, amen, as they're going along in their brand new walk with Jesus. And I want to put some things out there, hopefully, that will head some of the young people off before you make some bad decisions, before you get yourself into a bad predicament, amen, to know what the Word of God uh, it is saying, and I'm going to be dealing with uh, walking in holiness. And I know that there's people that think, well, that's a denomination. Holiness is for the Church of Christ, for the Baptist, for the Pentecostal, for the non denominational, for the Methodist, for the Lutheran for the Catholic, and for everybody all in between. It don't matter what denomination that you are. We don't have a Baptist Bible and a Pentecostal Bible and a non-denominational Bible. We just got one. Well, you got a lot of them out there, but one real one, that's a King James Version of the Word of God to go by to teach us and to instruct us. And being the watchman, I'm going to put a warning out, and I'm going to put a little guidance. I'm going to do a little teaching slash preaching, and mostly because I can't get a lot of you here on Sunday night and Wednesday night, amen, because of work schedules and because of your recliner and the fish are biting and you slept most of Saturday evening, so you're going to go home and uh, mow your yard this afternoon and you won't be back tonight. See, I've been preaching a long time. Amen. So I'm going to put some things out there for all of us. Amen. Those that are on fire for God and those that are not so much on fire for God and for those that kind of fell back, amen, you're kind of sagging a little bit. Hopefully I can get behind you and encourage you, amen, to move up a little closer to the Lord. So I want you to listen to the scripture today, and I'm going to be dealing uh, quite a bit with a topic today that's a little bit touchy. Should I get a tattoo? I'm going to answer that today, not with my opinion. I'm going to answer that out of the Word of God. Amen. And I first want to say, all of you, now we got several in our church that has tattoos. You got them in your previous life. Now then, you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. You cannot wash them off. 
They will not go away. Amen. So don't you take any offense to anything I'm preaching today. I'm not belittling you. I'm not criticizing you. That's something you can't help. We've all got a past of some type, and we can't help that. But I want to teach in the Word of God and show you where we're not supposed to get one as a Christian. Amen. That it's not pleasing in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. This is a problem in a lot of churches I'm hearing from other pastors. In fact, I just did uh, just a week ago. Heard from some other pastors that uh, called me for some advice. How do I handle this? Uh, uh, some of my new converts are arguing with me and I, I don't know how to handle this. Uh, they saying it's in the Old Testament only. I said, oh no. The New Testament is full of it uh, where you're not supposed to take a tattoo if you'll read it. And and they said, well, they're saying it doesn't specifically say thou shalt not uh, take a tattoo. And I said, well, it doesn't say thou shalt not stick a pencil in your left eye either. It doesn't say anywhere thou shalt not cut your tongue out. So if they put up a shop somewhere in Glasgow that says 50% off for tongue removal, are you going to go and get your tongue cut out because everybody else wants one? Because it's the hip thing. Because it's a good thing. Because you saw somebody else that was cool that got a picture of their mama or got their baby's name on it. You know, that don't work too good sometimes. I know a man one time that put his wife's name on it and, uh, you know, on his arm, you know. And later on, their marriage broke up he got remarried, you know, and Samantha had to wash him, watch him take a bath every morning with Phyllis's name on his arm. Amen, for the next 30 years. So there's a whole lot of drawbacks, amen, to getting a tattoo. And the number one thing, amen, God's gave you a beautiful body. Amen, clean and holy looking. And we don't need to go mess that up. Amen, what's the devil's signature? Amen. I'm going to read you some things in the Word of God. This is not just about tattoos. This is about a lot of things today. Or Brother Jimmy just preached to the lost and let me live how I want to. Don't work that away. God's got some things in the Word uh, that He expects you. If you're going to carry His name, uh, He expects you to dress, talk, act, and go to the places that He would go. Amen, and not be going to the places that the devil's children are, they are at or dressing and acting and marking our bodies up as Satan's children marks their bodies up. Amen, amen. All right, Romans 6 verse 1 says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? That means let grace be a license for us to sin and just get saved and go right back and do everything. God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead, by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. That means we no longer sin willingly. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Christ Jesus our Lord. Let not sin 
therefore reign in your mortal body. This is talking to the believers. This is talking to the Christians. That ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members, arms, legs, and parts of your bodies as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye become the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as though ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now yield ye your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now men, excuse me, being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end, everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. First Thessalonians 4, verse 7 says, For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Hebrews 12, verse 14, Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Leviticus 19, 28. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with the price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Romans 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the means of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. 1 Corinthians three sixteen. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. 1 Corinthians 10, 21. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Romans 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Ephesians 4, verse 24, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. 2 Corinthians 5, verse number 10 says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, A-L-L, all, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that which he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Romans 6, 13. Neither, I done read this, going to read it again. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God 
as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. One more place. Galatians 5, verse 17 says, For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that you would. Let us pray. Father, in the loving name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, to preach of the mighty word of God. I pray, Father, once again for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Knowing, Lord, without your anointing, I will be unable to preach your word. And without the anointing, I know that all that would be said and done would be void. And it would be in vain. Touch my voice today, Lord. Strengthen it, Lord. I pray, God, to give me, uh, Father, Lord, liberty, Lord, to preach your word and spirit and in truth. Asking you, Father, Lord, to use me today. And, Father, Lord, touch the hearts and prepare the hearts of all that are here today at the shepherd's house and all that are watching and listening by TV and by radio and by live streaming. Lord, I pray, God, that you would move, Lord, upon those, Lord, that are hungry for the word. Those are rebellious. I pray, God, Lord, to cause them to understand, Lord, it's the flesh that's kicking against the spirit as the spirit tries to give us freedom to live a holy life and one that's presentable before you. Father, help us to be rapture ready. Help us, Lord, uh, Father, Lord, to be in such a place, God, that, Lord, if we were to be taken out this day, that as a Christian we can say that, Lord, we've done all that we could for you and, Lord, that we've walked and lived a holy life and not one, Lord, that we sneaked around and tried to see what we could get by with and, Lord, yielded our flesh, and, Father, Lord, and the members of our flesh to the world and the worldly things. Help us, Lord, not to be conformed to this world, but, God, that we might be a transition through you and might be a different creature than what the world has. And, Father, let us walk in newness of life and let us walk in holiness. In the name of Jesus, we humbly pray and ask these things this day in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now, looking into the Word of God here, the title of the message is uh, today for us to walk in holiness. Now, to the carnal mind, uh, they would tell you that it doesn't make any difference where I walk a, a holy life or not because I've got good Christian friends uh, that goes to church uh, and they've got tattoos all over them. Uh, they smoke cigarettes. Uh, they drink a beer. They let a word slip every now and then. And, uh, they look at Playboy magazines. Uh, a little bit every now and again, and they dress like the world, and they talk like the world, and I know that if they can make it, I'm going to make it too. But see, the Lord didn't say they was going to make it. You got that dreamed up in your mind. Amen, because you're not their judge, and neither am I. But for us as Christians, we are different than what we was before that we got saved. Others in the world should be looking at us and saying, I wish I had more of that. I wish I could be like that. I wish I could live that kind of life. I want to move up. And the life that they're living is influencing me to be a better man, to be a better woman. Amen. And I'm beginning to understand that God's called me into holiness. God's called me to be different than what I used to be. Not better than the, anybody else, but better than what I used to be. That I could lead others uh, through the light of the Lord uh, and give them this precious hope. Uh, amen. Those that are living in darkness, uh, those that are strung out in drugs, uh, you're never going to win them to the Lord if you say, come on, go to church with me. And you're cussing and taking drugs and uh, living like a devil and dressing like a devil and doing things, uh, amen, that is worldly. You're never going to win them to the Lord. Amen. If you're one of my children and you're sitting at the Wilson table, amen, and you are, I, I got a, a T-shirt on that says Smith on it on the front and Smith on the back. I might tell you, if you love the Smiths all that much, you probably just need to change your name to Smith and go live with the Smiths. But if you're going to eat from my table, you're going to, and, and you're going to claim to be a Wilson, you're going to get you a Wilson T-shirt on. 
Amen. And you're going to act like a Wilson. Uh, my wife, when she was uh, uh, just young, uh, uh, she was such a good woman and such a good mother. And uh, we had just got saved and got started to church. Uh, and just a year or two uh, after that we got started into church, uh, the pastor's wife, uh, uh, Sister Barbara Wheeler, uh, stopped my wife uh, after church one day. She said, honey, can I tell you something? She said, yes, ma'am. She said, I want to commend you. So I've been looking at your little boys ever since uh, that, that we've been uh, pastor and my husband been pastor of this church. And I've been watching you. She said, them little boys' ears is always so clean. Their little fingernails are always so clean. And their clothes is always pressed and ironed. And they're looking so presentable. And you dress them uh, uh, with, uh, with, with love. And you dress them uh, with pride uh, and bring them to church. She said, I want to commend you. I don't see that in a lot of young women anymore because they're too busy to keep their kids clean like they need to. And she said, well, thank you, Sister Wheeler, but I do that because my kids are a direct image of me. Amen. That's why that I keep them clean. That's why that God wants us to be clean because we are a direct image of Christ. And if we're talking like that we don't need to be talking, amen, out in public, amen, we're bringing a reproach, amen, back upon Christ. If we're dressing inappropriately, amen, out in the public, we're bringing a reproach back upon Christ, back upon the church. Amen. We're in a time now today that people goes about half naked. Amen. I know this is not going to be very popular today, but it'll be okay. Amen. They dress about half naked. Amen. Young women. Amen. And old women alike. Amen. They wear dresses. Amen. So low cut. Amen. That it's almost embarrassing. Amen. Let me tell you something. Folks, there's only three people got a right to see your boobs. Amen. Listen to me for just a moment. Amen. One's your husband. One's your a mama and the other is a doctor so cover them up amen keep them hid amen listen don't let them be seen well brother Jimmy I can't buy anything amen that don't expose amen the slow cut then you need to be like my little holy wife you just went to see Jesus amen she got her one little white blouses and she put it on kind of like his sister's got on there amen to keep it from being too low cut her dress was like this but she had a white Blouse on under it. I buried her in one of them because I know how she was. Amen. She was such a holy woman. We'd be in the bathroom together and we had double sinks getting ready. She said, Shut the door there. I said, Honey, there ain't nobody in the house except you and me. She said, I know, but somebody might see me. I said, How? We got a hallway there. There's no windows. She said, I just feel better if you shut it. I said, All right, honey, I'll shut it. Nobody in here but just you and me. She was a holy woman. I mean, she kept her body covered up, amen, and hid. Amen, today people goes down the street and the more bottom they can show, the happier that they are. They want to show the tops and they want to show their hips. Amen, for some reason, amen, they wear them shorts. I call them cheek shorts. Amen, they show both cheeks, and I'm not talking about these up here. Amen, as they go down the street, amen, they let too much stuff shine. We're supposed to let your light shine, not your bottom. <laughs> Testing, one, two, three. Amen, we need to dress. Amen, appropriately. Amen, we need to talk like we're supposed to talk. Amen, listen, if you're going to live for the devil, then you dress like the devil's crowd. Amen, take your clothes half off. If you're going to live for the devil, cuss. You're going to hell anyhow. Might as well just go ahead and cuss. Amen. I don't want to hear it, but it ain't going to cause any problems because if you're not going to live for the Lord, you're not going to make it anyway. But if you're a child of the God, clean your vocabulary up. Amen. Talk like an ambassador for Christ. Amen. Don't be putting markings on your body. Well, Brother Jimmy, I just love seagulls. I do too, but I don't want one on my face. Some people's got so many rings on, got them in their nose and got them in their toes and got them on their ears. I don't know where all they got them. I don't want to see because they might have them someplace, eyebrows and everywhere else. I'm not preaching on rings today. If that makes you feel good, you just don't put one on me is all I'm going to say. Amen. But listen, folks. Amen. If you're trying to look like a Mr. Bad Dude, amen, that you've seen on television, and I want everybody to think that I'm like Mr. T. 
Amen. You know, Mr. T was about as foul mouth as you could get. Amen. The devil's crowd. Amen. Why does God's people want to look like the devil's people? Amen. When you get freed from sin and become a new creature in Christ Jesus, why don't we dress that away? Why don't we act that away? Why don't we change our habits? Amen. Repent and be converted. Amen. I read that scripture. Amen. In Acts this morning, amen, where Peter was telling those in the early church, amen, to repent and be converted. Well, what's the difference? There's a big difference in repenting and being converted. Repenting means you ask God to forgive you for the sins that you committed. To be converted means you're not doing it no more. You're a changed person. If you convert, amen, a diesel engine or a gas engine over to a diesel engine, it don't burn gas anymore. It burns diesel. Amen. If we're a Christ-like person and we've been converted, amen, from a sinner into a saint, oh, we'll show up at church when we're supposed to. We don't turn three colors of green when they pass the offering plate. Hey man, it looked like we just come up with a severe case of hemorrhoids. Hey man, when they pass the offering plate, hey man, when we got our heart gets saved, our wallet does too. And our purse does too, if you got a purse. Hey man, all of that, hey man, falls right into place. Hey man, today, how in the world can we say, hey man, that I'm a Wilson and have a Smith t shirt on? How can we say, I'm a Christian? And we are identifying ourselves uh, as a worldly person. Uh, amen. The word says uh, not to be conformed to this world. Amen. But be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Well, Brother Jimmy, I want Jesus, uh, but I want all of those worldly habits. Uh, I want to feel like I fit in. Uh, if you fit in with the world, uh, you have no part with Christ. If you fit in with the world, well, Brother Jimmy, I won't come back no more. Well, that's just up to you because I didn't read this out of the Wilson's Gazette. Amen. I read this out of the Word of God. And it's my job to teach you. Amen. We need to go back, get the Scripture, and see how it is that we need to be living. Or we pattern our lives after somebody, amen, that's living in the shadows, that kind of giggles at sin, amen, thinks it's funny when you tell a dirty joke. Let me tell you the difference between God's crowd and the devil's crowd. When somebody tells a dirty joke, amen, the devil's crowd's going to go, ha, 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 
I went to work the next, the first day after I got saved on Sunday. I went to work the next day, and I went, and the first thing I done with all of my coworkers, as we were gathered together at the time clock, after clocking in that morning, I said, "Fellows, there's something I need to tell y'all." They said, "What you doing this weekend? What happened? What'd you get into?" I said, "I got into Jesus." I said, "I got saved yesterday." I said, "God called me to preach," and I said, "Oh." I said, I want you to tell you it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. My life is so different. And they said, well, I guess we don't need to cuss around you no more. I said, I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't because I stopped it. Stopped it yesterday because Jimmy Wilson died. That whole band that was full of anger and full of hatred and full of bitterness and full of anxiety and full of stress, he don't, he don't live there anymore. I got the same old car. I got the same house that I live in. I got the same wonderful wife. But Jimmy died yesterday, and I had a new Jimmy. He's come alive in Christ Jesus. And I said, I'm a new creature. And they said, well, we're happy for you. I said, I'm going to preach. I want you to come hear me. They said, well, we'll try to, and some of them did. Come hear me in my first message or two and, and so on. They found out that's all they wanted of him. But <laughs> wonder why. Amen, because he heard the truth. Amen, the next thing you know, the Lord went to dealing with me. And the Lord said, uh, you're going to carry the gospel. You're going to preach the gospel. And you're going to go to different churches. You're going to cut your hair, son. I said, oh, Lord, I, I like this long hair. And them sideburns down to here. I was hip-hop. I was a cool dude. Amen. I had that 70s look. Amen. All the way left into the 80s, you know. There it was in 1982. And the Lord said, if you get in my pulpit, you're going to look like a preacher. Go cut your hair. I said, well. So I went to town. Went to, I didn't even tell Jenny what I was going to do. I come in, had the hay mode, and she didn't know I was even going to the field, spiritually speaking. I come in from home. She said, Wow. I said, yeah, I got her mowed off. And I know some of y'all can't picture me with long hair. You can't even picture me with any hair. Amen. But that was a long time ago. Amen. But I want you to know, amen, God slicked me up. I went back into the church, and the people said, woo-wee, we got a new Jimmy here. I said, yeah, God's working on me. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. The Lord began to change some things. Uh, amen. In my life. Uh, amen. The Lord said, get rid of your country music uh, because it, it's offensive to me. Uh, amen. What I've been listening to. Uh, amen. All of those years before that I got saved, uh, Charlie Pride and Mel Tillis and all of those. Uh, man, uh, I was kissing the angel good morning and singing I love her like a devil when I get back home. I got off from work. Put that eight track in that new A-Track player I had in that 1972 Super Beetle Volkswagen that I was driving, four speed in the floor. Man, I was plush. Amen. I turned that on. It started doing something right in here. It didn't feel right. That I love to love you, baby, and look at you in them tight-fitting jeans. Didn't go along with what I got at the altar. And the Lord said, it's time to get rid of them. So I went home, got rid of a brand new eight track tape player. Had them of them uh, eight tracks stacked up about that high on the desk. I throwed every one of them away. And man, I felt freer and closer to God than I'd ever felt. Amen. On about May that year, amen. I got a long story. You heard me tell it about the cigarettes. And the Lord got rid of the cigarettes. Told me it's time to get rid of them. He is moving me to sanctification. And people today don't hear sanctification preached on anymore. All they hear is greasy grace. They've been getting grace and you slide in and out and live like the devil. Listen, you can get in grace. Amen. As long as you stay in grace. I don't have no problem with once in grace, always in grace. Amen. But when you get in grace and use it for a license of sin, it becomes an abomination in the eyes of God and it becomes a poisoning doctrine to be taught. Amen. We need to be teaching holiness and not running around telling everybody, oh, well, everybody sins every day. God understands you're weak in the flesh. Where'd you find that at? You ain't found it in the Bible. Amen. All I could find is holiness. And the word holiness in the King James Version of the Bible is in there 43 times. 43 times. 
times in the Word of God, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Amen. The church needs to clean up and move up. Amen. We need to dress up. Amen. To look good. Now, you don't have to have a man a long sleeve shirt, and women don't have to wear dresses. I'm not getting into that clothing stuff, but I'm telling you, you need to cover up your nakedness. I am telling you, you need to be presentable. Amen. And mamas need to be dressing their kids. If you claim to be a Christian, dress them. Amen. Like a Christian. Amen. Don't you put your little girl or yourself. Amen. Some women, they wear their pants so tight. It looks like somebody's leaning up against the bed, melted them, and poured them in them. Amen. If they used to bend over, they'd bust them. Amen. Because it's so tight. Amen. The shorts are way up here. Amen. You can see the cheeks. Amen. Don't be dressing them like that if you're a Christian. Now, if you're lost, amen, and you living for Satan, and you living for the devil, it don't matter. You can go naked because you're going to hell anyhow. It won't make any difference. But the church needs to clean up. The church needs to pray up. The church needs to move up, amen, and start being, amen, what God's called you to be. If you're going to be a Christian, amen, be one. If you're going to be a Wilson, put on a Wilson T-shirt, not a Smith. Testing one, two, three. Amen, I know this one's going to be very popular. I just prayed, Lord, let me still be able to live in Barron County. When I get done preaching, amen, one good thing about it, Jenny's done gone on to be with the Lord. I won't have to worry about nobody killing her or hurting her because of my preaching. I can just wear it back and let her fly. Amen, listen, we need today, amen, to hear holiness preached. We need to hear purification, sanctification, living right, doing what's right, amen, in the eyes of God. Amen, we need to have, be an ambassador for Christ. Amen, what are you showing the world? Amen, when you're saying, hello, I'm going, where are you going? Oh, I got out of church today. Boy, we had us a shouting time. I'm headed to the tattoo parlor. I'm going to get a whale put on my uh, cheek. I got one put on my other cheek last week. I'm going to put Noah across the forehead before long, and they know that I just love Noah, and I love whales. Hey, man, what's that showing the rest of the world? It's showing the rest of the world you're a little bit dingy. Hey, man, the Bible says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. How can you hold on to the world and hold on to Christ at the same time? If we're going to have to turn one of them loose. We're going to have to go all the way for the world, go buck naked and cuss every time you open your mouth, amen, and lie every time that you get a chance, or clean up, dress like you ought to, and stop that nasty stuff. Amen, one of the two. We can't be parts of all of it. Amen. Many today wants to be a Christian, but they don't want a cross. Amen. Many today, amen, wants to say, oh, I'm one of them holy rollers. Oh, I'm speaking tongues and I roll in the floor. Yeah, and you cuss like a sailor on the way home. Amen. I ain't got a lick of confidence in you. Amen. Oh, I'm a good Baptist. Proud to be a Baptist. Praise God. Yes, we had such a good service. And then that blankety blanky kid of mine scratched my car this evening, and I slapped the teetotal blankety blank out of them. Mm-mm. That's not what a Christian's supposed to be doing. Listen, folks, there's somebody watching your life. Amen. There's somebody, amen, getting an inspiration off of you, or, amen, they get offended. Uh, amen. But the way that you live, uh, amen, we need to be holy. You don't hear holiness preached anymore. You don't see holiness live. Well, Brother Jimmy, I don't want to act like a freak. If you claim to be a Christian, you're already a freak to the world. Amen. So if you're going to be a freak, why don't you act like one? A Christian freak. Hey Amen. Why don't you be one? Why don't you really be a true one? You know why it's so hard to get people to come to church? Because they point out all the hypocrites. There's so and so, he's a deacon over there and he drinks like a fish. There's so and so, they're a preacher. They get up in the pulpit and preach and look there. They're lusting after every woman that there is and making goo goo eyes at every one of them and flirting with them at the restaurant. And, Mm, I went to a restaurant one time, and actually it's down in Scottsville, but where I came from, and there was a man that I thought so much of. I, I, I know him all of my life. A, a good church going, a, a Baptist man, good, and it don't matter what denomination, you got it in all of them. 
and he was there, and me and Jeannie were sitting at the table, and we were eating, and the lady come over to him and said, Sir, I'm not going to call his name. Would you want anything else? He said, Yeah, I'd like for you to sit down right here in my lap and let me talk to you and hug you up for a few minutes. I looked at his wife, and she went, I thought, Brother, you killed all the influence you ever had with me. From the time I was a boy, I looked up to you. I looked up to you so much. I thought, man, if I ever uh, become a Christian when I was a boy growing up, I want to be like him because he always dresses good and all this stuff. But you know what he done? He degraded himself. He embarrassed his wife. Amen. I, uh, what she ought to have done is took him to the pastor. Amen. That's what she ought to have done. She ought to have went to the pastor and said, my husband's got a lust problem. I think we need to talk to you. We need to get this stuff stopped. Or Brother Jimmy, it'll cause trouble in the marriage. It's better him going to hell. Amen. We're not going to make it. Amen. Full of lust. Amen. And people are lazy. Amen. Today, they don't want to go to church. They go to church about three times a year. Christmas and Easter and Thanksgiving. Amen. And the rest of the time of the year, they identify with somebody that has no interest in God. They have no interest in church. Somebody was telling me last night, uh, said somebody uh, that went to their church, uh, the pastor said, we've been missing you. I hope that you come to church. And he said, I'll just tell you the, uh, the, the truth about it, pastor. It's just not our priority right now in our life. Church is not. It's just not our priority. I said, at least they told the truth. But it hurt the pastor really bad, really discouraged him. I, I can see why they did. I've heard every kind of excuse can be thought of. Hey, man, there was a man one time, we had a revival when I pastored in Cave City. Years ago, this man's dead now. I hope he got everything right before he died. But we was having a revival, and he come to me and said, Brother Jimmy, <clears throat> I won't be there. I think it was Tuesday night. I said, what's, what's going on Tuesday night? That you can't be there. He said, well, I hate to tell you this. But the Wizard of Oz only comes on TV once a year and said it won't be on anymore until next year. Now, this is the truth. I'm telling you the truth. See, back at that time, CBS put the Wizard, <laughs> put the Wizard of Oz on once a year, and that's the only time you could We didn't have YouTube. And, you know, we didn't have cable television. Uh, you know, and you couldn't order uh, CDs and DVDs and things like that. They, they didn't exist uh, back at that time. And he said, it'll be a whole other year before I see the Wizard of Oz, and I love the Wizard of Oz. And I thought, yeah, boy, you about as spiritual as a wooden two before. Amen. And that's where people are today. Uh, amen. Amen. And we put that image out there, amen, in front of the others. Uh, yes, I'm a Christian. I, I live for Jesus. Uh, oh, how I love the Lord. Uh, and we'll come to church uh, and sing, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Jesus on the way to the tar tattoo parlor with a cigar in our mouth, uh, amen, and a drink in our hand uh, and a couple of cuss words. Uh, I can't wait till next Sunday so I can go back and sing how I love Jesus one more time. Uh, amen, Jesus exposed people like that. Uh, in the word of God is being hypocrites. Amen. That's what he did to the Pharisees. He said, you hypocrites, you may clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but inwardly you're like ravening wolves on the inside. Amen. He, he let them know, amen, that they was going to make it into the kingdom of God. What I read to you here in the word of God, amen, this day lets us know, amen, that the church is going to be held accountable. My boys, when I was raising them at home, amen, they were held, I kept them held accountable. I told them how they were going to act in church. I told them that you weren't going to disturb nobody else. I'll warm your backside up. You'll think that the grim reaper has come to our house. Amen, if I catch you misbehaving in church and I have to get you home, it's going to be rough. I'll wear the seat of them britches out. And the most of the time I could do this, like that right there, and they Swamp down in the seat, amen, because they knowed I wasn't a person that threatened them. I was one that made a promise to them, and they knew that I would keep them. Amen. Some people say, you don't quit, I'm going to whip you. Liar, liar, pants on fire. If you tell them you're going to whoop them, wear them out. 
No liars are going make to their, make their way into the kingdom of God. Amen. Straighten them out. Amen. The Bible says that a man that beateth not his son hateth him. Amen. That don't mean abuse them. That don't mean hit them with a two before or a tobacco stick. That's talking about beating the backside. Amen. Or you're putting a little piece of tree tea to the legs. Amen, it's good for them. Amen, they need to hear. Uh, and this is something you don't hear in America. Have you ever heard the word no? Go look it up in a dictionary. I wish that Joe Biden would look it up in a dictionary and AOC and some of those others. Uh, amen, that's full of woke and a lot of other things they're full of, I won't say because I'm sanctified and I don't talk like that no more. Amen, but listen, uh, uh, you know, uh, they need, uh, amen, to understand, uh, amen, that the word of God says no, not to do some things. Uh, amen, but we're in a society today, uh, amen, they want to go in, go to the altar, shed some tears, get in a creek or the baptistry tank, uh, get dunked, uh, and then say, well, now, praise God. Whew, I got that took care of. Now I can go back to my cussing and lying again. Now I'll go back to the rough living. and Now I can go get me a Playboy's magazine on the way home. And I can look at those things because I got that took care of. Amen. Just like it's somebody, uh, you know, that just built their house or, or just finally got their diploma uh, in, in high school and thinking I don't have to do that but one time. Amen. That's the attitude uh, that a lot of people have. So, amen. But we've got a life that we're living before Christ. We're going to be held accountable. Now, when my boys was at my house, under my rule and under my reign, they didn't use bad words. They didn't watch stuff they wasn't supposed to watch on television. I kept them under control. If they went to somebody else's house and spent the night, and I, that, that just didn't hardly ever happen in our house because I, I, it's not a good idea today to let people do that, but on occasion I would, but not very often. I'd tell the parents, I said, if they misbehave, you can spank them or you can call me and, and they'll wish that they hadn't called because if I had to come get them, I'll take them home take care of it and they won't be back no more for a while. I'll straighten this mess out and I'll explain to them what it is that they're doing because I'm not raising dogs at my house. I'm raising boys. I'm not raising wild animals at my house. They're not going to live and act like a wild animal. They're not going to look like, amen, they swing from tree to tree by their tail. Testing, one, two, three. Man, it's getting quiet here. I knew it would. I just say, Lord, let me live out of it tomorrow. Amen. Let me still live in Barron County. If you don't, I'll go back home to Allen County. They love me down there. Amen. I'll just go back if I have to. But I'm going to preach the word of God. Amen. We need, amen, to pray up and to move up and to dress like we ought to. Amen. Listen and go to the places that we need to go. You don't need to be seen in places. Christian ain't got no business in a smoke-filled pool room. Amen. What business you got in there? You didn't go in there to have a prayer meeting. Oh, Brother Jimmy, I went in there to win them to the Lord. Yeah, baloney. And I'm not talking about Oscar Meyer either. Amen. That's not what you went in there for. It's because you're torn between two worlds. Amen. You want Jesus, but you want the worldly crowd. You want the worldly stimulation that comes from being a part of the world. And you want to be accepted, amen, into the world and by worldly people, but have just enough of God, amen, to have a position in the church, to have a place in the church where you are identified as a Christian on Sunday morning, then I'm going to chop up my body, ear ring it up, mark it up, riot all over it. Amen. Put the wife's name, all those things, the girlfriend's name, all that kind of stuff. Oh, listen, folks. We need holiness in our lives. I hope today that I've helped someone. I know I preached a little bit longer than I wanted to preach today. Amen, and preached a message that I tried to get out of. I tried to tell the Lord, Lord, put somebody in my mind that you would like for me to get to come and preach, and I'll just tell them, pray about preaching on holiness. And I'll sit over there and do what you should have done today while I was preaching. Let me give you a demonstration of what a Christian does if they love their pastor. Come on, brother, preach it, praise God. Yes, sir, brother, come on, let us have it. Amen, brother. Amen. Do you know how everybody was backing up the preacher was here Sunday night? You know why they was doing that? 
We had one person in a church started it and it burst it out over everybody else. Who was that wild person that started it? Me. I started backing them up, getting on my feet, and I said, preach it. Tell us the truth. Preach it. Come on. And y'all got up and got to preaching. You stopped watching television. Got to backing up the preacher. Amen. You know what I see in church a lot of times? Not just in our church, but other places. People make a dozen trips to the bathroom. They pass babies. Amen. They talk. You could have talked to your husband at home. You need to shut up and listen. Amen. How would you feel if I got to give you a microphone and called you up here? Would you give your testimony? And as you started to go over and talking to John, where you want to go eat lunch today? You want to go to the Mexican restaurant or would you like to go get a steak today? Yeah, they're still talking. Uh, if you got your passport in yet, well, you'd be sure to call me this evening and talk to me about that because I want to talk to you about maybe getting your passport and stuff. No, they're still talking. Uh, so uh, anything else you want to talk about while they're giving their testimony? Or, Brother Jimmy, I would never come back if anybody done me that way. Then why do you do me that way? Excuse me. Come on, preacher. Preach it, Brother Jimmy. Thank you. I had to back my pastor up, uh, amen, and help him just a little bit. Uh, amen, that's where, that's where we're at today. Uh, amen, why? Amen, are we going to claim to be a Christian uh, and hold on to the world? Uh, amen, we need to make up our mind. Uh, amen, which God uh, are we going to serve? Uh, are we going to serve uh, the prince of this world? Uh, are we going to serve Jesus, uh, the son of the most high God, uh, the Lord of lords, uh, and the king of kings? Uh, amen, are you in love with Jesus? Or are you still in love with the flesh? Woo! I've got to give an altar call because both of us is going to have to have some relief. Hey Amen. I'm wore out and some of y'all are too. Hey Amen. <laughs> give you an opportunity. <clears throat> now let's have single file come into the altar today. I don't want anybody to get crippled or hurt as you're coming down to the altar to pray today. Hey Amen. As you're getting holiness in your life. Hey Amen. Praise the Lord. Those that are watching by TV and by radio, God bless you. Thanks for joining us and have a blessed day. 